Greetings, everyone, and welcome. I'm Dr. Vlad. I'm a general pediatrician specializing in autism for children. Today, we're diving into a fascinating area of research that could potentially offer some hope for families dealing with autism spectrum disorder. We're going to explore the role of folinic acid and what the latest science says about its impact on autism symptoms. So first, let's talk a little bit about folate. I want you to imagine your brain is like a busy city that's always under construction. To build and maintain the city, you need essential workers and supplies. One of these crucial supplies is a vitamin called folate, also known as vitamin B9. Folate is super important, especially for growing brains because it helps make the building blocks of our cells, the DNA and the RNA. Uh, you think of the DNA and the RNA as the blueprints and the construction instructions for all the cells inside our bodies, including brain cells. When new brain cells are being made rapidly, like in newborns and young children, they need plenty of folate to make sure everything is built correctly. And where do you get folate? It's usually found in leafy green vegetables in our foods. Think spinach. Now, what's the connection to autism? Now, here's where things get a little more complex. Some studies have shown that many children with autism spectrum disorder, as high as possibly 76%, although the estimates range, have something called autoantibodies that can cause problems with how their brains get fully. So autoantibodies are like security guards that accidentally block the delivery of folate into the brain because for anything to go from our blood into our brain has to cross a thing called the blood-brain barrier. Now specifically, these autoantibodies target what's called folate receptor alpha. It's like the delivery truck for the folate. When these autoantibodies block the folate receptor alpha, it's like the delivery truck can't get to its destination. And this blockage can lead to a shortage of folate in the cerebrospinal fluid, which is the liquid that surrounds and cushions the brain and spinal cord, even if the amount of folate and folic acid in your blood is totally fine. This fluid is super important for bringing nutrients to the brain and taking away waste. If there's not enough folate in the cerebrospinal fluid, it could affect how the brain develops and functions potentially contributing to some of the symptoms that are seen in autism. So, in essence, having these autoantibodies can disrupt the normal delivery system of folate to the brain, which may impact brain health. Now, folinic acid is a form of folate that's able to bypass some of these issues. It doesn't use the same channel to get into the brain that regular folic acid does so we can get into the brain more easily. And the research looking into, well, if you have children who have these uh, autoantibodies and you help their brains get higher levels of folate, what actually ends up happening? So the research is actually intriguing. There have been three published randomized control trials and one non-randomized trial that was therapeutic that looked at the effects of folinic acid given to children with autism. And what did they find? All four of the trials that were published all showed improvements in symptoms. That's right. Every single one. Now, keep in mind, they were all small trials with less than 100 kids each receiving treatment. And the reason for their small sizes always comes down to money. And that uh, folinic acid is a relatively cheap uh medication that can be prescribed to kids. So there's not a lot of uh, money that can be made off of having very large and expensive clinical trials involved. Now these trials, including studies that were done in 2013, 2016, 2018, 2020, 2024, all suggest that folinic acid could be beneficial. And there is a fifth trial that has recently concluded which includes 134 children from three different states, including Phoenix, Arizona, Atlanta, Georgia, Lexington, Massachusetts, and Brooklyn, New York, uh, that is due to publish their results soon on the effects of the folinic acid in the children with autism symptoms. Let's break down uh, some of the key studies and give you some highlights. 
So the first one, uh, the lead author was uh, Dr. Fry in 2013. This was a uh, non-randomized, non-blinded, no placebo-controlled group of 93 kids uh, who received folinic acid, and it did show uh, that they received benefit compared to a waiting list control group. Um, so after that, in 2016, a study in Arkansas with 48 children that lasted 12 weeks. This was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial, the gold standard of research. Uh, children who received folinic acid showed significant improvements in both verbal communication, especially those who were positive with the folate receptor alpha antibodies. Uh, another trial done in 2020, conducted in Iran, was a 10-week study focused on children who had severe symptoms. So those children received risperidone in the trial, and half the group got folinic acid, the other half did not. And the group that got folinic acid had greater improvements in speech, stereotypic behavior, hyperactivity, and irritability compared to those on the risperidone with the placebo. In 2024, a study from India involved over 80 children and lasted 24 weeks. The folinic acid group had significant improvements in their CARS, which is the Childhood Autism Rating Scale scores, compared to the placebo group. Again, the children with high folate receptor autoantibodies saw more pronounced benefits than those with less autoantibodies, which makes sense. Now, the amount of improvement in the CAR score uh, wasn't the kind of effect that you would see a child who is a nonverbal with moderate to severe autism all of a sudden having little to no autism symptoms whatsoever. It was more of a, uh, a reduction in the challenges that they, they had, but definitely above what the placebo group saw and experienced. Now, here are some important details and considerations. Now, the typical dosing of the folinic acid in these studies was 2 milligrams per kilo per day with a maximum 50 milligram per day. That's divided into two doses. It's crucial to note that back in the 2024 study, they, all the children also received behavioral interventions such as ABA and sensory integration therapy. And the folinic acid was in addition to these interventions, suggesting there may be a synergistic effect. Now, uh, the emerging research on folinic acid and autism is promising. While more research is always needed, these studies suggest that folinic acid could be a helpful intervention, particularly for children with folate receptor alpha autoantibodies. And in these trials, there were very few to no adverse effects among the children who received folinic acid. Keep in mind, this information is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Should your child use this treatment, folinic acid? Well, speak with your doctor and ask them about it. In conclusion, the science is pointing towards a potential role for folinic acid in supporting children with autism. As always, we must follow the evidence and stay tuned for further research. For parents in New York State, navigate autism with confidence. Call our office and empower your child's development with proven strategies and compassionate care. If you learned something today, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below and leave a comment to help spread the word. Imagine being empowered with up-to-date, accurate, cutting-edge medical information about autism and how you can help your child thrive. This world is possible.